Welcome to the warm-up. We're in St. Mary's today to talk Rough Rider football. I'm Mark Koontz. Matt Finkel will be along in a little bit, but we begin with St. Mary's head coach Doug Fry. And Coach, I suppose looking back at 2014, week one, that had to be a very cathartic victory over Sydney. Well, I think for our kids and our community, it was a uh, huge victory. And uh, for me, you know, I, I came from winning over a Wapakoneta, so it was just another win for us as we moved on. But uh, our kids, uh, I felt so great for our seniors. They'd never had won a football game in their high school career. I can't imagine that with all the hard work they put in. So it was, it was just a tribute to their work ethic. Yeah, that group of seniors went on to win four more games, five and five. I, I think probably you're not satisfied with five and five, but I think a lot of folks are happy with that as a good first step with your return to St. Mary's. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, as the old adage goes, we stopped the bleeding a little bit and, and we got kids back and interested in football and, and excited about football. So it was a step in the right direction. Certainly a senior class last year, very special senior class led by Isaac Fitzgerald, one of the leading rushers in the Western Buckeye League last year. He's graduated. Who's going to step up? Who's going to be the next guy to uh, take the reins as St. Mary's lead running back? Well, I don't know if there is one guy. We're kind of committee right now. Bo Kenning uh, came up as a freshman last year and played a good bit for us, had 190 yards against Salina. So he'd be the heir apparent to the uh, job. Chase Roop, uh, who's going to talk here on our show tonight, and um, is a linebacker that's going to come over, and, and T.J. Mealy, a, a junior. So we have a sophomore, junior, and senior kind of sharing duties. Last year, you guys led the WBL in rushing, no surprise there, total offense and, and points as well. Were you surprised where the offense was after just one year? Well, I knew our kids in the back of their mind had wing T basics and they, they'd had it for years. Uh, I don't know if I was surprised. I, I'm really not a guy that really looks back too far or looks too far forward. You know, right now as we finish up Tuesday, my thoughts are on Wednesday right. and, and really not even that far ahead. I'm thinking about Tuesday night and how we're going to go in and make corrections in our meeting and move from there. So I, I don't know if I was surprised or not, but I never really set a, a certain expectation. I expect us to improve. If you're going to gain 300 yards rushing on the ground every game this season, it's going to come down to the line as well. How does the, how's that offensive line looking for you? Well, I would say that's our biggest concern, rebuilding our lines. Uh, we're not as big in the trenches, and uh, we lost some key seniors. Now we got some good young kids, so how quickly they mature will be the key to our season. Let's talk defense a little bit. How's uh, the defense front looking for the Rough Riders? Well, that was an area Coach Yale did a great job with our defense a year ago. It was an area we need to grow in a lot. We spent a lot of time in the offseason, our coaches working together, uh, working on ways to improve our defense, and I think we'll be improved. I know you were really thrilled with the coaching staff you were able to assemble last year. Everybody back from that uh, coaching staff? Everyone's back, and we added another young guy to the staff, Nick Hager, who came over from Wapakoneta. So we have a good, energetic group. There's uh, two older guys, and I call them older guys. They're much younger than me, but there's two guys in that late 30s, early 40s that were with me before, and, and a bunch of young guys in their 20s. And they're uh, St. Mary's people, so that they work hard, and they care about our program. Yeah, Nick played at Bowling Green. Certainly he's got that work ethic. Are you looking at him to kind of spearhead that rebuilding line then? Well, he moved over to the defensive line. He was okay. an offensive lineman at, at Wapakoneta at the college level, and he's a math teacher. The great thing about our staff is every single one of those guys are teachers in our building. And any time that, uh, you know, uh, the, the outside people do a great job, and any time you can build relationships and stress academics and be in the building, it, it's a big positive. Speaking of building relationships, how are your relationships now back here year two your second turnaround at St. Mary's? Well, you know, there's a lot more people wave at me in town, and, <laughs> and, uh, and I uh, now don't have to worry about how I dress. And before, it was Wapakoneta out of town and uh, just kind of in plain gear in town. And, uh, you know, uh, we never moved. We've always lived right. here. And uh, my wife uh, was a teacher here that's retired from here. So, uh, you know, it, it really wasn't much that changed other than I'm received in a little more positive way now. Open up the year at Sydney this season. What needs to be accomplished between now and week one? Well, first of all, I really believe this is going to be one of the best, if not the best, schedules we're going to face in a long, long time. Coach Dungess, who played for me here as the mm -hmm. head coach at Sydney, I think this will be his best team there. I believe it's the seventh year at Sydney. Uh, Van Wert will be playing game two, and, and, and they've been building that football team for three or four years. So this is a senior-dominated Western Buckeye League, and we're really a junior-dominated football team. You know, talking to some of the other WBL coaches, I'm not sure if there is necessarily a favorite in the WBL this year. I think everybody is looking at the league as being very tough top to bottom this season. Yeah, I, I think it'll be the best league 
balance-wise, I've seen in a long, long time. I think Wapakoneta and Kenton got to be your favorite still because those are the teams that have programs built. Uh, even though Wapakoneta lost a lot of seniors, they have a lot of very good kids coming back. So they're your favorites. Everybody else is trying to fight uh, below them, but I really can't see a clear-cut favorite. How'd the summer go for St. Mary's? It was good. Uh, you know, the summers tend to go as you get older a lot quicker uh, as they click by. But uh, it was, and it was kind of different starting two a days on a Saturday mm -hmm. and then having a day off, so you didn't really get the continuity from that day. But it worked out uh, very well, and uh, I thought it was a good summer. It was nice to have the turf here because it rained so much right. this summer that it'd been hard to get out on the grass and do our camp days and our seven on seven. So we had a good summer, but like I said, it went quick. Did you have to change anything up this summer from normal years past? I think it was in some ways a tad easier in year two from the standpoint that our kids already knew some of the basic things. They understood the routine. They understood our expectations. So, uh, you know, that, and that I wouldn't say, I don't know if easier is the best word, but there definitely was some carryover from year one. One thing that definitely is going to change across the state this year is how you practice, the new limitations on terms of contact and hitting. How is that going to affect what you do? Not at all, because I think they're great ideas. I think they're great rules. They're, they're great mandates from the state. And we, we never full contact in practice anyway. So I haven't done that probably in 15 years. We don't tackle backs. And a lot of people ask me why you don't do that. I just don't want to take the chance with those guys getting hurt. And so our full contact's been limited for a long, long time. I've had guys that have never actually got tackled to the opening scrimmage. I've had guys that haven't got tackled to the opening game because they've had been nursing injuries. So I think it's a good idea. And, and I think it'll, it's, it'll be a good step forward for high school football. I know a lot of people are concerned though that without being able to teach tackling you're gonna get into a game and guys aren't gonna know how to tackle. How do you teach tackling without contact? Oh we really haven't tackled live in practice. Like I said I really it's been probably eight or ten years since we've done it. We do a lot of work on high jump pits, <laughs> mats, those type of things where we're running feet through and we're wrapping up. So I think in that first scrimmage, there's a little bit of reaction to that, and maybe even the second scrimmage. But I think if you're smart and and you maybe choose a few moments in practice to do those little tackling drills, that that I I think that you can balance out being taking care of a young man's health, but also taking care of the fundamentals of the game. A couple scrimmages coming up. Obviously, part of those scrimmages is getting used to that contact. What else do you look to see out of the scrimmages? Well, it's your first test. How, how do kids react? Mm -hmm. Maybe when they're under pressure a little bit. And, uh, you know, that's probably the toughest thing for a first year coach because everyone's different in their personalities. And someone, sometimes you just need to pat a young man on the back. Sometimes maybe you need to motivate him a little bit to get going a little bit more. So I know our kids a lot better now, but uh, the biggest thing that we want to look for is how are kids reacting. And, and like I said before, we just keep moving forward and, and learn the little things. All right, thank you very much, Doug Fry. Thank We're you. gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll see how those kids react. Matt Finkel's questions here on the warm-up on W. Welcome back to the warm-up from St. Mary's. I'm Matt Finkel, and I'm joined by two Rough Rider seniors. It is Austin Tester, running back, quarterback, cornerback to my right, and Randy Slife, split end, free safety on the end. Austin, let's start with you. Last year, you guys, week one, let's go back to week one, you get the win, snapping the 21-game losing streak, and it kind of turned the tide for this program. What was the emotion like almost about a year ago now when you got that W? It was it was unlike anything we've ever felt before, you know, seeing all the seniors crying because I mean it was their first victory and it was it was it was the biggest our biggest goal was to get the thing back on track and I think that's really what brought it on. So it was awesome. Randy, it definitely seemed like the program is back on track. Five and five is a, a big improvement and just watching practice there's a lot of energy. Is do you get that sense? Yeah, there's a lot of energy. Everybody's everybody's hyped to play this year. We wanna five and five's not gonna cut it this year. We wanna do a lot better. Austin, how's training camp been going so far it's pretty early on only a couple days in but two days going well and and working hard yeah everybody's working real hard we're all working towards the same goal which is you know we want to win WBO we want to go to playoffs um, we're all working towards that goal we're all really really focused on getting there so we're all working really really hard being enthusiastic hustling around so it's really good Randy how about for you how's camp going and what's what's making this camp with your group of seniors special so far uh, I'm loving it the group guys I, I've been around 
for forever. I just love, love playing with him. Coming up on the WBL schedule, you guys get started with week two against Van Wert at home. You looking forward to playing some Western Buckeye League teams? Oh, I bet? Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Always ready. What game do you have circled if you had one in mind for this year? Who's the best opponent? I mean, it's always Salina to me. I Yeah, it's always Salina, without a doubt. Randy, do you have... Are you focused on Salina as well? It's Salina, yep. Wapak's got to be an important game, though, given where Coach Fry came from, right? Pretty much any game. And what about playing in the Western Buckeye League makes it so much fun, the competitiveness? It's really competitive. Uh, all the teams are really tough. There's not. There's usually not really a team where you can just pass off. All the teams are scrappy. They're tough. You know, it's, it's all the games you have to fight for. Without a doubt. Well, best of luck this coming season, guys, and thanks for letting us come right, by. Thank you, sir. Time for a break here on the warm-up. When we come back, we'll be joined by a couple more Rough Rider players. Welcome back to the warm-up in St. Mary's, third and final down, and I'm joined by a couple more rider players. Chase Roop, linebacker, fullback to my right, and on the end it's Jacob Huber. He plays on the defensive line, both seniors. So, Chase, what's the biggest difference here now in year two under Coach Fry as opposed to your previous high school football seasons? Well, uh, we have more experience this year than we did last year. I mean, it was our first time with Coach Fry, and, uh, well, when he came back, it was exciting because we had our old coach back and we wanted to win. Jacob, what did it mean to you to go five and five last year and see this program going in the right direction? Um, it was the world. I mean, like, we being, or, uh, actually winning the game was the greatest thing ever. Uh, uh, I hated seeing our seniors never get a win in their high school career. Chase. Playing fullback, you must have worked closely with the running game that had, with, had so much success last year. What did you learn from some of those seniors, specifically Isaac Fitzgerald, who had such a, a great season last year? Uh, well, Isaac was a big leader for us, and uh, losing him was a big loss for us. But, I mean, me and Bo are going to come in and uh, fill that rule that Isaac did. Jacob, what can we expect defensively on that defensive line? You guys working hard. Is the line gelling just about yet, ready for week one? Yeah, um... We're going to be coming off the ball screaming. We better be ready. What do you think this team needs to improve upon most before now and when you take the field for real and it starts to count? Uh, just becoming a fist as a family. I mean, well, about there, but we need to work on it. What do you think your biggest strengths are right now as you get ready for real football? Um, I'd have to say being a fist. We family uh, is ride of pride. You guys seem like a tight-knit group, and of course you'll always get tighter as you make your way through the schedule. Well, best of luck this season. That's going to do it for this edition of the warm-up from St. Mary's. For our entire crew, I'm Matt Finkel. We'll see you next time.